the central concept behind the 18th Bond film, Tomorrow Never Dies, is highly relevant today. The power and influence of social media and its propensity to manipulate and deceive, sometimes to devastating effect. My name is Stephen Archibald and welcome to my movie podcast. Hello, welcome to my podcast, They Came From Within, Cult Movie Reviews. Tomorrow's news today. Tomorrow Never Dies, 1997. Pierce Brosnan literally hit the ground running in the mega successful GoldenEye. He gave an impressive, hard-edged performance in his movie debut as 007. But in Tomorrow Never Dies... You can clearly see he was rapidly growing in confidence and ease in the role. The ghastly Bond villain in this film, the media mogul Elliot Carver, was clearly modelled on Rupert Murdoch and Robert Maxwell. Carver uses his infinite wealth and resources to engineer a conflict between Britain and China risking World War Three, all in the name of ultimately securing exclusive broadcasting rights in China. Bond is soon gunning for Carver in an adventure which will lead to him becoming entangled with Carver's trophy wife and teaming up with a gutsy female Chinese agent. Wei Lin from the Ministry of State Security was played by the delightful Malaysian superstar Michelle Yeoh who recently bagged herself an Oscar for her spirited performance in Everything, Everywhere, All at Once. Established as a Hong Kong action star who usually performed her own stunts, Michelle put both her acting and fighting skills to great use here. In fact, the producers Barbara Broccoli and Michael G. Wilson liked her performance so much they considered making a spin-off film based around her character. They're probably kicking themselves for not doing so. Police Story 3 Supercop, Supercop 2, Crouching Tiger Hidden Dragon and Memoirs of a Geisha are included on Michelle's acting CV. The part of Elliot Carver was played by the fine English actor Jonathan Price. Interestingly enough, the great Anthony Hopkins was originally cast in the role. He quit a few days into production, finding things too chaotic for his liking. Plus the fact that the script was incomplete at that stage. Hopkins went on to make The Mask of Zorro with Antonio Banderas and Catherine Zeta-Jones, which was directed by GoldenEye's Martin Campbell, who had turned down the opportunity of directing this movie. He would, of course, be back to helm Casino Royale in 2006. In reference to Elliot Carver's newspaper being called Tomorrow, the original title of the film was supposed to be Tomorrow Never Lies, a typo of the word lie being substituted by die impressed MGM so much they decided to keep it. This film was directed by Roger Spottiswood, who was born in Ottawa in Canada, making him the first North American born individual to direct an official Bond movie. Prior to Tomorrow Never Dies, Spottiswood had directed Jamie Lee Curtis in the fun slasher movie 
Terror Train in 1980, Nick Nolte in the excellent political thriller Under Fire in 1983, and Tom Hanks in the lovable Turner and Hooch in 1989. The part of Elliot Carver's wife Paris went to Terry Hatcher, renowned for her roles in Lewis and Clark, The New Adventures of Superman, and Desperate Housewives. As with Jonathan Price, she was cast at the last minute. The beautiful Celia Ward had auditioned for the part, but at just 38, she was deemed too old. Terry was 32 at the time. Natasha Henstridge, who had burst onto the scene in another MGM co-production called Species, was considered for the part. And as hard as it is to believe now, the gorgeous Italian actress Monica Bellucci failed to secure the part after her audition. It's been noted that Brosnan thought they were fools not to cast her. Of course, Monica finally made it into the series in 2015 Spectre. Initially, Pierce and Terry had a difficult working relationship. He certainly did not like her being late. However, things improved between them when it was disclosed that Miss Hatcher was three months pregnant at the start of filming. The distinctive sinister looking character actor Vincent Schiavelli portrayed Dr Kaufman an assassin who goes after Paris Carver funnily enough in a 1987 episode of the TV series MacGyver Terry played an innocent witness who was stalked by an assassin one who was played by Vincent Schiavelli one of the movie's best scenes is the car park chase, in which 007 has to steer a BMW by remote control. It's vaguely preposterous, but exhilarating. It took 10 days to shoot. Part of it was filmed in Germany and completed in London's Brent Cross Shopping Centre. A total of 17 BMWs were utilised. Having already played a villain in The Living Daylights, Joe Don Baker portrayed Bond CIA contact, Jack Wade, in both Goldeneye and Tomorrow Never Dies. In between these two films, Brosnan and Baker were among the stars of Tim Burton's delightful Mars Attacks. Returning to the subject of villains, it is worth mentioning that John Frankenheimer's blistering 1998 crime drama Ronin features three actors who played major Bond baddies Michael Lonsdale, Sean Bean and Jonathan Price. The iconic John Barry loved what his fellow English composer David Arnold did with the Bond theme tunes on his 1997 album Shaken and Stirred the David Arnold James Bond project. Barry recommended Arnold to Barbara Broccoli and David got to compose the music for this film as well as for the next four 007 flicks. David Arnold had first come to my attention for being among the writers and producers of the brilliant Bjork single Play Dead. The theme tune to the 1993 British crime movie The Young Americans. Tomorrow Never Dies is the first Bond film to carry a title which does not come from an Ian Fleming novel or short story. Sheryl Crow performed the film's theme song, which she co-wrote with the producer Mitchell Froome. It was David Arnold who penned the closing track Surrender, which was performed by K.D. Lang. The aerodynamic antics of the pre-credit sequence were shot in the French Pyrenees in January 1997. 
Otherwise, filming took place between the 1st of April and the 5th of September, 1997. Tomorrow Never Dies received its world premiere at the Odeon Leicester Square on the 9th of December, 1997, which also happened to be Judy Dench's 63rd birthday. On a hefty budget of 110 million, it made $333 million at the box office. Considering all the complications and casting problems which had to be dealt with, Tomorrow Never Dies turned out to be a rather good movie. Not quite as good as its predecessor, what with Carver's role being somewhat underwritten, and it is certainly no match for its successor, The World Is Not Enough. I'm Stephen Archibald, and thank you for listening to They Came From Within Cult Movie Reviews. I do hope you found my podcast informative, and please feel free to follow, like or subscribe. Look after yourself, and goodbye for now.